Hey everyone, CNC Keith here with yet again another DIY CNC video. This video is an introduction to how to edit Centroid's brand new virtual control panel. The new VCP, as we like to call it, is you can see here on the right hand side of the screen. It's an all new piece of software. The, we completely rewrote the virtual control panel so that all these buttons can be changed by the users or an OEM or a retrofitter to suit their particular application. So I'm going to dive right into it here and show you how to make some really easy, fun, simple changes to the virtual control panel, like moving a button, changing uh, what the button says, and all kinds of good stuff like that. This is going to be the first video of probably several videos, but certainly the first video of a two-part video where I'm going to introduce to you the tools that you need and show you some simple things to do to get you going with the brand new VCP. Okay, let's dive right into it. I'm going to use a couple of tools here to edit the VCP, and the first one of them is notepad plus plus and if you don't already have notepad plus plus go to the notepad plus plus dot org website and download the latest version and install it the second uh, piece of software that i'm going to use is inkscape inkscape is a completely free program uh, similar to illustrator and corel draw and it allows you to edit graphics uh, quick and easy and freely that's the other piece of software i'm going to use and then I like to use this uh, color picker, HTML color picker web page, um, which is really slick. It lists the hexadecimal color codes, which we're going to use in this video. Um, so those are the three tools that you need to uh, get going here. And let's drive, dive right into the structure of the virtual control panel. Where are the files? What are they? Where do they live? All kinds of good stuff like that. So on my CNC PC here, I've double clicked on the C drive and I have the CNC 12 mil installed. So I'm looking for the CNC M directory and I've just opened that up. And when you open up the CNC M directory, you get a bunch of choices here. The one I'm after is resources and then VCP. And then inside the CNC M resources VCP directory, we've got a bunch of folders here, buttons, images, skins, and a XML file. Okay, the new VCP is controlled, if you will, by a bunch of XML files. Now, XML files are really awesome because they're both human readable and machine readable and easy to understand. So let's check it out. If I open up the skins folder, a skin is kind of, if you will, the master XML file. And, and everything in this file right here, Acorn Mill VCP skin, is uh, determining what we see on the right-hand side of the screen on the VCP itself. Um, before I open that and show you that, I'm just going to back up. There's just a general purpose images uh, folder. These images are the icons and logos that, that appear on the VCP. And I'm going to back up and jump into the buttons folder. And in the buttons folder, there's a whole bunch of folders. So every single button on the VCP has a folder. And there's more folders in here than there are buttons displayed. Because in this folder, you're going to have all buttons for lathe, mill, router, and anything that's added in the future. All the buttons are going to be in this one location. So, for instance, if I opened up this button that said B negative, you're going to find out there's two files in any button folder. There's an XML file, which is the button XML file, which we're going to go over in detail, and the actual button graphic itself. Now, button graphics are SVG files. Now, a lot of people are familiar with JPEGs and bitmaps and even PNG files. The SVG SVG file stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and it's far superior to a JPEG or a bitmap because you can scale it to any size and it maintains its resolution. It is a vector format. It is not a bunch of dots. It's not a bitmap format. It also allows the VCP to be really snappy and responsive as well. So that is why I have the Inkscape program. You could also use CorelDRAW or Illustrator or any 
um, program, and there's many, many programs out there that will edit and create uh, SVG files, um, many for free and many inexpensive and some real expensive ones like Illustrator. But I'm using In Inkscape in this instance. If you want to view an SVG file, like if I want to see what that button looks like, just right click on it and any browser will open and view so you can view the SVG file. So I'm going to just use Chrome and that's what the B minus button looks like right there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Alrighty. So now that we're oriented here, let's jump back to the skins folder and you could have many different skins for the VCP so one day you could run uh, this skin and the next day you could run another skin um, that is which skin CNC 12 and the VCP use and pay attention to is determined by this XML file right here and I'm gonna right click and this is where notepad plus plus comes in and we're gonna use notepad plus plus to edit all the XML files and right here what's that the fifth line down is the line that tells the VCP which skin to use so the VCP is going to look for acorn underscore mill underscore VCP skin and that's the one it's going to use when CNC 12 starts to display all the buttons according to that XML file so let's go check that particular skin out and let's open that up with notepad plus plus Alrighty, one of the first things you want to do when you're starting to play around with this is save this file, this uh, VCP file, as a different name. So I'm going to just uh, call it the original one. There we go. And I'm going to close that just so that I have a copy of it. And we'll uh, open up the original and we'll just directly edit the original. Here we go. So I just made a copy of it is all I did. Okay, so I'm going to maximize the window so you can see what's going on here. Um, this, the body of the skin is where all the positions of the buttons are located. So the other tool that I'm using here is the VCP 2.0 user's manual. So definitely download and print out a copy of this manual because this manual has details on everything that I'm talking about in this video. And right here on page three, it shows that the VCP is laid out in a grid pattern. So each button is on a row and a column, just like a chessboard. So you've got a row and a column. So this button here would be row one, column one. This button here, the fourth axis positive, would be row seven, column two, etc. So, where uh, th this skin program, um, this skin XML file, defines where the buttons live, where they go by the row and the column. So, one of the easiest things to do is to move a button. So, once you understand that we have a grid and you see all these buttons here in the XML file, Let's say I didn't like the rapid override right there. I want it down here to the left of, oh, here's a better one. Let's do this. Let's move the cycle start button, okay? So some people don't like the cycle start button at the default location, the stock location, because it's close to the Z minus button. So let's take the cycle start button and move it over here to the left of the cycle cancel button. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go back to the Acorn Mill VCP skin and we're going to find the cycle start button. So how do I know which one of these? Well, they're all named here. And this is really important. These names, this one right here is called spindle underscore plus, coincide with the folders names, the folder names. So if you open up the buttons folder, this is how this all works. You got to get this name perfect and it's case sensitive and everything. So you got to write in the XML file exactly the name of the button the folder's got to be the same name, and the button inside the graphic has to be the same name, and the XML file for the button has to be exactly the same name. So let's check it out. So let's come down here and find the cycle start button. Here it is, way at the bottom. So it says right now that the cycle start button is on row 10, column 6. So if I bring the VCP back up, 
What I want is it to stay on row 10. That's the row that we're on here, counting from the top down, uh, and move it over here. So that would be row 10, column 1. So all I got to do to move the cycle start button is leave the row alone and put a 1 in there. And I'm going to hit the File Save button. And you'll notice when we go back, hey, nothing moved. Well, that's because CNC12 and VCP, they re it reads that XML file when it starts. So we have to shut down CNC12. And as soon as it's shut down, there you go. I'm going to restart it. And voila, when it comes up, you're going to notice that the cycle start button is now moved. And it's to the left of the cycle cancel button. And there we go. And just to prove that it, the, the function went with it and everything. So I can hit cycle start. There's no job loaded. Let's go get a job. Let's grab this program here. And if I hit cycle start, it starts the job. And there, there we go. Oh, well, maybe I got to release e-stop. Maybe I need to go on to the Acorn forum and read up on that. Okay, so here we go. Just proving that the cycle start button works. So we successfully moved the button graphic and the function at the same time. Alrighty, that's about the easiest thing you can do. Let's say that you don't want a particular button to be displayed. Um, maybe I have a router and this button right here, the spindle counterclockwise, makes absolutely no sense because I'm never ever going to spin my spindle counterclockwise. Well, what you can do is run right back to that same skin and there's spindle clockwise. Here's spindle counterclockwise. And if I just delete that row right there, I just deleted the spindle counterclockwise button. Let's shut down and restart and see what happens. Here we go. And starting back up. There you go. The spindle counterclockwise button is now gone. Now we've actually freed up that space so you could actually put another button there with a completely different function and that's perfectly fine. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's do some other really easy things um, like this little faucet here for the flood coolant. Um, I know that drives a bunch of router guys crazy. So let's get rid of this icon. This is called an icon and this is called a logo. So I could also delete or change the logo in the upper right hand corner of the screen and actually put it anywhere I want. It doesn't have to be there. I could move it down here and move a bunch of buttons up there, whatever you like. So let's go see how, all, how that all works. At the top of the skin XML file, there's a bunch of things that we're going to come back and talk about some of these things. But down here, you'll find there's a couple lines uh, with an image tag. There's an image tag at the beginning and the end. And one of these is the coolant image. There we go. That's it. So that coolant image is this image right here. And the other one is the Acorn logo. There's the Acorn logo right there. So let's um, let's change this coolant image to a different image. Uh, I just happen to know that inside of the images folder, let's go grab it, is there is a router vac icon. So all I've got to do is come down here and tell the VCP to use router underscore vac underscore icon. You don't have to use underscores. I just like to use underscores because it's a nice, clean, easy way to break up um, the name of the file or the folder. And OK, I'm going to hit uh, save. And now we're going to restart CNC 12. And we're going to see what happens here. And let's fire back up. And you'll notice that the coolant, that faucet graphic, is now changed into what looks like a, one of those big vacuum pumps, a snail-shaped vacuum pump. Now you can just as easily delete that graphic just by deleting all of these lines right here from the image tag to the image tag. Um, the position of this image is controlled right here by the span, and, and that's basically how wide it is, and then uh, where it's going to start, 
and then this is your row span, how high it is and where it's going to start using that same grid pattern. So you could move any of these, these static images wherever you want and they'll just display on top of whatever's right there. Uh, while we're doing images, let's go ahead and um, change the logo. I just want to show you how easy that is. So just uh, prepare a logo um, and all I've got to do, I, I have one prepared for one of our OEMs. And um, oh, let's see, there's the Acorn logo, coolant, vacuum pump. Uh, there's the Vulcan logo. Okay, VCP logo Vulcan. So again, just like I did with the icon, is all I'm going to do is change the name and uh, PCP uh, logo Vulcan. Was that the right name? Let's go back and check it. BCP logo Vulcan. Yep. Make sure that you have the spelling and the and everything perfect there. It's got it cannot uh, can't have one character wrong here on that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and shut down. And we're going to see how easy it is to change the logo on the BCP. Alrighty, we're going to fire it back up and we'll see what we get. Okay, there you go. There's the Vulcan Machine logo in the upper right. It's that simple. Now, I could just as easily um, just delete that entire image tag uh, from one image tag to the other and just delete that logo space totally and free it up for buttons. So if you need three more buttons, because that takes up three button space, that's all you got to do right there. Okay, this is um, pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close down uh, Slack here so I don't get any interruptions. This is pretty easy to understand. And let's go, so let's go take a look at the individual button XML files and, uh, and the individual button or, uh, images. So I'm going to jump back to buttons and let's look at the X positive button. So that's down here. It's in alphabetical order. X positive. Let's open that. So let's just right click. Let's just right click on the button and open with Chrome. And that's the button. So we're definitely on the right button. That's all I'm doing. I'm just using Chrome to make sure that it's the button that I want. And I can go ahead and click open and Inkscape will open up that SVG file. So what I'm going to show you here is how to change the color of a button or for that matter, um, the, the letters on a button as well. It really doesn't matter. Color, letters, whatever here. Okay. So this is what Inkscape looks like. I draw my buttons on a 100 pixel by 100 pixel square. So that's the artboard size that I use. You can use different sizes because this is a scalable vector format, but buttons you want to have a square aspect ratio. So because uh, they're equal length in X and Y. So when I click on this button and I want to change the background color, uh, watch what happens here if I just hit red. The whole button turns red. It really didn't do what I wanted to do. So I'm going to hit Control Z undo. Well, the button came into Inkscape as a grouped uh, graphic. So one of the first things you want to do is come up here to object and click ungroup. And now did you see that there were two different. Now there's two different. There's the background and then the actual writing. So they're two different separate elements. Now I can control, let's say I want to change it to, let's change the X positive to white first. And now let's change this button back background to black and then go file, save. Great. Let's shut this down and restart CNC 12. And you know what's coming. That button is going to be black and white when we restart. It's that simple. Okay, here we go. A black X positive button. So that's how easy it is to change button colors. Now I could just as easily type in a different letter or words right on top of the button with Inkscape. There's no difference. So I'm not going to go over that right now. I'll go into that in more detail in another video. Um, 
you would then, if you wanted all the buttons black, you would open up every single one of them, do exactly what I did and save it and, and change the colors to whatever you want. Well, how do I change, you might ask, how do I change the background color of the VCP itself? Well, if you were following along in the manual, there's actually a section uh, in the manual on that. So let's go find that. I think it's towards the end here. Um, logo. Oh, no, wait, it's about in the middle. Because, yeah, you see the tan color there. Okay, here we go. Background color. So there's a, a background tag. So, and it gives an example, here's the tag. And if I just add this background tag into the skin, okay, so I'm gonna open up that same skin and I'm just gonna make a space, put background in, and the colors in SVG files and in the VCP and the XML that we're using are hexadecimal colors. So all hexadecimal is, is RGB colors ex uh, expressed in a hexadecimal format. So um, that's why I like to use this color picker website because here it expresses all these colors in hexadecimal. Uh, Inkscape does that as well. Over here is the hexadecimal color in Inkscape. So it's telling me that black is six zeros. And then if I change the color to red, it's telling me it's FF000 etc. So you can pick the colors off of your program as well that you're using, uh, but if you just want to cruise around you can use the website as well just to look at different colors that might catch your eye. There's a bunch of really nice uh, uh, groups here. Anyways, okay, so the color I want to change it to is this right here, this tan color. So let's jump back and put our tan color in this first line and we're going to shut down and reboot CNC 12 and you're going to notice that the color of the VCP has changed to tan. There you go. That's pretty cool. Might not be the best color for all those yellow buttons we have, but if you change everything over to black, uh, that might be a really nice high contrast setup for uh, folks like me that uh, uh, have a hard time seeing things. So that's how easy it is to change the background. Um, I'm going to show you one last thing in this video and that's how to change the color of the LED of a button. So uh, let's give you a little demo on the work light. So let's go find the work light button folder and it is right there. And let's open up the individual XML file for the work light button. Now most of these XML files for individual buttons are just a few lines. Um, there's a thing called the skin event number, which I'm going to go over in the next video. There's also a thing called a PLC output. This is actually the LED uh, number, which I'm going to go over in detail in the next video. What I'm concerned with right now is this is the LED color on and off right there. So if I'm going to change the LED color from the red that it's currently at, um, I could pick for instance, the, in the manual, it shows a green. So let's pick that same green they use here in the manual. So I'm going to do a green on color. And all I got to do is change out this hexadecimal color for the green color. And right now, it would be green on and red off, a dark red off, if I save that and reboot it. So let's just check that out just to see what that would look like. Let's start her back up. And there we go. We got green on, red off. That's cool. So let's go ahead and uh, change that to the darker green color so that when it's off, it'll be a darker green. So it'll look like a green LED that is actually off. So all I'm going to do is change the off color to the darker green and hit save. And let's restart. And you know where this is going. Thanks for sticking with me on this long video. And I will produce a second video that talks more detail on how to change the function of a button. 
my advice to you for the beginning is to just edit existing buttons. You can move them around. You can edit the graphics. Like if I wanted to change M58, go in there and edit that button to be whatever you want. And then you could change the macro behind that button to do whatever you want. And voila, uh, very simple, quick, and easy way to do things. And I'll go over, that's how I'm going to start the next video. And then I'm going to show in the next video how to um, do some more complicated things. But uh, there you go. Here's the dark green and the light green LED change we made. Man, thank you so much for sticking with me on this video. And good luck and have fun with modifying the VCP to suit your taste and application. Take care. Bye-bye.